Welcome back to the Chatters Box. My name is Kyle McClellan, your host, and today on the Chatters Box, we are playing the game Name That Molina. Holy. Name That Molina. <laughs> we have Benji Molina with us. Benji, thank you so much for stepping in the Chatters Box. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing good, Kyle. Did you like so that? Good. He I loved on Sports it. Center every it. night. Name that Molina. Oh, I love that. You should have <laughs> said, "Name the fastest Molina." <laughs> <laughs> Which one's fastest? Oh my gosh! Which man. one? I think early on in in my career, I can take that. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. I I never caught. Nobody okay. knows this, Kyle. I never caught until I was signed by the Angels, and the guy said, "Here's a catcher's glove. Throw the second. Da da da. Here, you're signed as a catcher." My brother, they've been catchers for forever, yeah. so they, they got beat up knees and stuff like that, but I didn't. I played everywhere, so I, I thought at that point I was the fastest, but it lasted very short. <laughs> you got behind the plate, and things started slowing oh, yeah. down a little bit. Oh, yeah, little by little, my ankle sore, my knee sore, my legs are sore, and uh, there it goes. Yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about what you're doing for the Cardinals now, and then I want to jump into... Um, kind of your your past history and 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 go from there. But man, you're doing such a great job. And I don't know if all the fans know that the Cardinal games are now available in Spanish. Uh, and and explain a little bit about that, where where that started, where it's come from, and also the importance of that, especially for those Latin players and their families. Yeah, we uh we uh, this is our eighth year doing it. Well, obviously, um, me and Polo Asensio, we we started with two games. That's it. The last two games of the season was a tryout, I call it. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, we got a good response. You know, people liked what we did. What we did, and then the next year we, we kept going with thirteen or some, and we kept growing. And now we're doing. This is our fourth year, third year, fourth year of doing eighty-one home games. Home games. Now, think about this, Kyle. The players, you know, you played. The players, a lot of their family have no idea about English. No idea. They can see any channel in, in their country, um, and the games will be in English all the time. Now they have an opportunity here locally with La Tremenda, 8, 80 a.m., and then you go into MOB at bat, you know, the, the mm-hmm. page and, uh, and all that, and the computer, and, and you can listen to us in Spanish. Also, Bali Sport made a big jump to us. They put a SAP button, man. Okay. It is it is unreal for us to be part of that. I mean, even even American guys can go in SAP just to hear us. Mm-hmm. And for the families of the players, this is huge. This is huge, and I'm I'm glad to be part of it. I'm, I'm we're so thankful for the Cardinals to give us an opportunity to do this. It's very cool. Well, I think it's awesome not only for the for the St. Louis community, Spanish speaking people here and in the Midwest, but you know, for those players back home. I, I always uh, share a funny story of when I first signed, I go to Johnson City, Tennessee, and I'm in high school, <clears throat> you know, drafted out of high school, go down there, eighteen years old, and uh, and I'm I'm pitching and they we have a guy that's broadcasting the games. Well my parents, to get the game, had to call a number and put it on speakerphone, and they paid twenty five cents a minute no <laughs> to way. get to get that <laughs> broadcast. So I'd go out there and start, and I didn't have much success, and my starts weren't real long. But still, it cost them fifty bucks for them to hear me <laughs> give up seven, eight runs in a couple innings and be taken out of the game. That's super cool, uh, though. But man. but the parents will do anything yes. to be able to to connect, and obviously yes. in today's technology and, and world of you know so many different. I'm at, I look at all the college games that are on ESPN, yes. uh, ESPN Plus, and all these different ways. If your kids away at college, College, you can probably tune in some way of streaming it, whether through the college or, you know, on TV, which is awesome. So it's a huge deal for those families, I, and and not only for their families, but for the growth of St. Louis Cardinals and developing fans in those yes. Latin American countries. I love it. I love it. I, I seriously love it. We have fans. We have uh, family from like Gio, Gallegos, and and uh, at that time Cabrera. And you name it, you know every family of the of the of the players, and they come to us. Man, we listen to you uh, in Venezuela. We listen to you in Mexico. We're listening to you in in Puerto Rico, and you're like, what? You know, our voices are out there. We get we get tweets. Hey, say hi. We're listening <laughs> to you in Veracruz, you know, in Mexico, yeah. and we, we got one from Alaska. We got one from Germany, listening to us in Spanish from Germany, Spain, Barcelona, which is in, in Spain. But all those tell you that we are reaching out there. We got a bunch of them from Canada that you're like, wait, Canada? We have one from Brazil in Spanish. You know, they're big fans of mm-hmm. the Cardinals. And so that's how we're reaching out right now. You know, obviously, locally, like I said, mm-hmm. 8.80 a.m., La Tremenda, it's fine. But 
when you expand away from here. And plus, we have the um, affiliates, you know. Now we have like eight or nine of them around here. So that helps so much. And to be uh, part of this, Kyle, it is it is truly an honor, man. It, it really is. And, and we enjoy this. We go to schools like St. Cecilia, that are Spanish schools. And sometimes we go to hospitals, you know, and we see these kids that are only Spanish. Mm -hmm. When we went in the caravan, we went to a hospital, a couple of kids only Spanish. And they had an opportunity to hear me discussing baseball with them. Yeah. So it, it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, that's awesome. So did you think when you were done playing that, I know you coached for a little bit, uh, but did you think that radio was something you'd get into? No, 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 no. I, uh, I started thinking that I was going to be on TV when Harold Reynolds and I forgot the name of the guy from here uh, in the MLB network. I always mention his name, but um, he, he, they always call me, be ready, be ready, you're coming with us, you're coming with us, and, you know, every year, you know, and then I coach here, and then mm -hmm. I coach in Texas, uh, and they're like, okay, when you're done, you're coming here, and the year that I thought I was going, um, when I didn't do baseball, Joe Girardi mm -hmm. retired from the, the managing, they got him, and then Jim Tommy retired and then they got him so those two spots were filled but that's the only time i ever thought i was gonna be in front of a camera or in front of the radio i have the perfect face for radio. yeah very I'll good tell you. very I'll good face for radio. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, i'm happy <laughs> <laughs> well and it's cool you get to come here and obviously the the brother of yachty um which a lot of times you get introduced and it's like this is yachty's brother yeah. you get oh, you get, get tired of that you get, get tired of that i, I mean you're in st like, louis you get hey, it let me tell you 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 heard it before <laughs> we do some clinics together I just go out there to the kids and say, hey, let me get this thing out of the way, right away. I am Yadi's brother. That's right. He's doing great. <laughs> Can you well, get all the questions? If, if, the, if we were in San Francisco, if we were in Texas, it'd be the other way. <laughs> yeah, Yadi would be, be your way. brother. Maybe Anaheim. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah, Anaheim. But but you, you handle it great, and I, I just love, uh, I've been around you for a couple of years now and all the things, and you bring a ton of energy, excitement. Uh, and the fans here love connecting with you, and you, you're so gracious with your time. Uh, but I think it's awesome we're growing the, the Spanish side of things for those families, for the, the population here in St. Louis, the Midwest, uh, to be able to connect to Cardinals baseball. Um, you know, because if, if we're out there doing it ahead of other teams, it's just going to help expand our reach. And, and it helps. And, and it helps. We had more uh, fans. away teams coming in mm -hmm. and talking to us and say, hey, mate, thank you. Say, thank you for what? Yeah. And they say, thank you because you're our base. Yep. Like Detroit, for example, they didn't have uh, Spanish until like two years ago, and they started doing the same thing as us. Like this this year, we're gonna do only weekends at home, and and now they have 81 games. Uh, Minnesota doing all those games. They say because of us, they had a they had a platform. You know, had a, a way to see it, and they went into them. Atlanta, same way. So, I mean, for me, when they say that, I was like, wow, yeah. this is pretty cool. I never thought about it that way. I always thought about doing a job and, and having fun with it, doing Yaddy's game, like you said. You right. know, this is another thing. But uh, but when you have people coming to you and say, hey, man, you were a big part of our success over here in Chicago, same way. We have those guys, Omar, over there in Chicago that said the same thing. Mm -hmm. If you guys would not be doing 81 home games, we probably wouldn't be doing it too. Yeah. So yeah, that's awesome. It, it feels good. So let's talk about your playing career because a lot of people might not know here that your your playing career was w rivals uh, with Yachty's. I mean, you're up there. You're a World Series champion you know, over 12 years in the big leagues, uh, Gold Glove winner. Uh, I mean, one of yeah. one of the best catchers in in your Yachty time. Yachty only has seven more than me. <laughs> He's that's got a it. couple that's more. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, you started with Anaheim uh, and and had the opportunity to play with your brother in Anaheim eventually. Yeah. Uh, but talk about your time in Anaheim and, and coming up and, and kind of getting off you know, to a great start of your career there. Oh, my goodness. My time in Anaheim, uh, starting from the minor leagues, which you should know, uh, we won the 94 Midwest Championship with the Cedar Rapids Colonels at that time, Angels. This time, I think it's Minnesota. But um, they're going to get me into the Hall of Fame, <laughs> August 29th. Nice. Hall of Fame of freaking Cedar Rapids, Cedar Rapids Iowa. Crazy. Yeah. So that's a minor leagues. Then I keep going to double A, A ball, double A, all that, like everybody else. Well, not these days. These days, they barely yeah. step yeah. on the minor leagues. But but I pay my dues, man, mm -hmm. six and a half years in the minor leagues. And, and, and it was great. I, I had time to develop myself. I got great coaching stuff, and, you know, and 
they helped me out with my catching. Like I told you, I never caught. So when I got to the minor league, it was very difficult to do it because they got guys throwing cutters and all mm-hmm. these things that I never even heard of. So, but it went well. Now getting to the Angels, it was amazing when Mike Sosha got the team in 2000 and allowed me to catch. Remember Terry Collins, he did not like rookies. He always liked the veterans. So when I got there, he was not nice to me. He was not good to me. But when 2000 Sosha came in, he's a catcher. He saw what I could do. He gave me a chance. He, one time he called me like late, late in spring in 2000. He called me in. I'm like, so you don't have to say anything. Mm-hmm. I'll I, I, I work my ass off and I'll come over and, you know, this year I'll make it to the big leagues. And, you know, and he goes, what are you talking about, dude? I'm just here to tell you that you made the team, that you're my number one catcher. You go, you take care of the pitching stuff. I don't care about your hitting. I know you're going to hit and, and things like that. So he opens my mind. It's like, what are you saying? And, so that's how I started with the Angels, and I had I had good years with them. You know, I had a few injuries that didn't help out much, but winning the championship with your own brother in O two, yeah, it, it is an amazing feeling. And in O one, the GM um, Stoneman, Bill Stoneman, he called me. He goes, "Bimo, where are you at?" I'm saying, "I'm in Cabo, man. I don't know where you are." <laughs> so he goes, "Hey, hey, what? Got, got a minute? Got a minute? I'm gonna sign your brother. Do you mind?" You know, like, Mm -hmm. this is your team. I Mm -hmm. want you to know. I'm not trying to find you any competition or anything. I say, hey, Bill, if he wins, he wins. Mm -hmm. Who cares? Sign him up. We we can do this together. And sure enough, the next year, we end up winning the freaking championship, man. Hosey was back down and back and forward, you know, AAA. So he knew the young guys' pitchers. So when he came up, he helped me out with them. Lackey, all these guys that were so young at the time. Uh, Francisco Rodriguez mm-hmm. and guys like that. So he helped me out. It was it was an amazing time. It was an amazing era for me. Um, I, I think the fans need to hear this story. This is a funny <laughs> story. In 2002 World Series, there's a last inning, and in Game Seven we we're up. You know we're winning the game in the night. And Jose come to me, hit my back and pumped me up, and you know come on, we got three more outs, bro. Three more outs. Oh, you go get them. Blah blah blah. You know, and, and I was like, bro, we got three outs. I got you, I got you, I got you, let's go. And he goes, I told him, I said, hey, when the game's over, please don't come to me first because we're gonna start crying on TV, we're gonna, you know. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, please don't come to me first. He goes, oh, no, don't worry, don't worry, bro. And I you, I'll go around and mm-hmm. then I'll go meet you. I'm like, Fine, no problem. So fly ball to Ersti and, and I go to uh, Percival, we all hug in, and the first guy I see is my brother <laughs> coming to me. Like, he totally forgot, dude. And I'm looking at him like, what the hell, man? I told you not to come over. <laughs> oh, my God, we won. So we were in camera. At this time, Yari, my, my dad, and my mom were in Puerto Rico, and they had a big screen in front of the house like that. Uh, they locked up the street. There was a lot of people watching, so they probably saw us crying like a freaking babies, <laughs> and it's like, it's your fault, man, it's your fault. So, But, you know, winning with your brother, it, yeah. it's, it's the ult- ultimate, man, ultimate. Yeah. So you, you have, you kind of bust onto the scene and make a name for yourself, and then, you know, shortly after, I remember being in the minor leagues, and Yachty was, you know, a prospect. and uh, He signed in 2000. Yeah. And, and you guys were in... I think you were playing the Marlins or Tampa, one of the two. But I remember it was a big deal because he went down there to to yeah. see you guys and went first to a time. game. And yeah, I came came to see mm-hmm. you guys. Tampa. And uh, and it was just like, man, there's you know there's this legend of the Molina brothers is starting, and nobody knew how oh. good Yachty was going to mm-hmm. be yet. But still, to have two brothers and the pressure that he had of hey you got two big league brothers that are making a name for themselves and then here he comes and, and did what he did is incredible it's but. It's, it's unreal <laughs> uh, that time it was uh, my dad and my mom first time ever seeing me and my brother play in the major league game that was the first time but yaddy was there yep. they came to see yaddy and then they drove over to tampa to see the game so it was a great opportunity there's a great photo out there yeah that I've seen is it, yep. super cool you know and 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 every time i see the photo it, it kind of brings me back to where we were yeah and yaddy just talking baseball and Oh yeah, yeah, you gotta hit this guy. This guy got nothing, man. This guy, you know, things like that. When he's in the minor leagues, all of a sudden, everybody kept asking me. The Angels, when I went to Toronto, <laughs> everybody's like, "Oh man, you have a little. You guys are good." I'm like, "No, you haven't seen Yadi. You haven't seen this kid. This kid's gonna be special." No, no, no. He got a lot to do, you know, because you're two brothers. And all of a sudden, he explodes. Yeah. Man. So I mean, what's that like growing up? The three of you. I mean, was it always known that? 
you guys were standout baseball players and i mean you said you didn't even catch until you got into the yeah. system but i mean the what how, how often has that ever happened to where three brothers growing up all make it not only make it to the major leagues but are are you know feature points of their team i mean huge huge point all three of you hosey and and yadi obviously were you uh, know huge parts of all the teams you were on i i it's hard to explain other than there has to be a, a god's hand in there you know we are very uh you know faithful people we believers and we think that god put us in a position because he knew we can help out so many people uh with our platforms mm -hmm. and things like that i think uh had to be that i mean obviously we put the, we put the work and you know and desire and dedication and all that but um man i i it's hard to explain how three brothers um make it and not only that two championship rings each and you know successful people Jose, Jose was very successful if you would have seen Jose at at the uh, you know levels you know minor leagues yeah he had nothing on you nothing he could hit he can throw so i've i've heard somebody ask yadi early on who's the best one of the three he said hosey yeah he said hosey he was he said hosey's hosey's got the most talent yes um he said he's the one that he said me and benji are are good mm -hmm. he said but hosey's hosey has has unreal. talent that we don't have yeah unreal mm -hmm. i i always said it too you know uh, i think hosey was more level you know like he knew he was there he knew he was he had it so he kept going level yeah yeah he's more like mm -hmm. i want to be that mm -hmm. way. so that was that was the only difference but man talent wise oof man that was he uh he could catch he was still doing it in the big leagues late late in his career mosina won 20 games with him bartolo won 20 games with him Cy youngs you know we catch that's another thing that people don't know kyle is we caught Cy youngs it wasn't just normal you know we right. caught, we caught our, our chair up normal and i call it normal but <laughs> because these guys were unreal right, right. like roy holiday i mm -hmm. had a chance to catch him and team lincecum went in two sions cliff lee i mean those guys were studs holes he caught um you know petty or he caught these guys uh, musina like i said you know and guys that were really good pitchers and he made him even better mm -hmm. so uh, that that's part of us uh, nobody talks about I got that question asked a lot uh, why are we so successful catching is because we care we care about you pitchers mm -hmm. we do and I always told Soch I want Chills to get a two year deal three year deal because I want his family to be great I know his wife I know his kids so we care about him we, we, we watch video all the time we read notes because we want to be prepared for you guys so you guys can be the best of you and all of a sudden, it's not about me, it's about you. Mm -hmm. You get a contract, you live good, you have a house, you got a nice car, you go with your family. You see, so we thought of that. We had that mentality behind the plate. These days, with all the respect to all the catchers, but not many catchers think that way. They're, they're obviously worried about their job and what they can do, but not many of them worry about what happens to the pitchers. Well, I can attest to that with Yachty. I mean, Yachty would do whatever you needed him to do, and there was no ego. There was no, hey, I'm Yachty or Molina. I'm doing it this no. way, and you adapt to me. He was like, hey, man, what do you need me to do to be successful? I say all the time, if I asked Yachty to stand on his head and catch, he'd do it. You know, no, yeah. no questions asked. Whatever we got to do, we're working as a team. And that was one of, one of the things I appreciated him the most out of throwing to him for five years. I was, only got one thing that Yachty probably didn't know, and I'm going to tell you. The only thing that I, I told him in, in one of the times that I hang out with him at his house or whatever, I told him, I said, Sosha taught me one way to catch. Um, you have to be smart, of course, but, mm -hmm. but, but he taught me one way. He said, you get the guy, the first guy or, or whoever, the first at bat, you get him out inside, fastball. The second at bat, you get him out with slider. The third at bat, he doesn't know what's coming. <laughs> And the first at bat is your, your setup. Your closer, yeah. And your closer. Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry. Mm -hmm. So that stuck to my head. How can I do that with every single batter? So I had to study. I had to watch this paper. And when I told Yadi, he goes, man, I never heard of that. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was my glory, you know? <laughs> I, I said something that Yadi didn't know. Yeah. What the hell? Yeah. So that was pretty cool. And, and he actually tried it here the last couple of years with, with different types of pitchers. Mm -hmm. Um, it actually made him way better, you know. Mm -hmm. 
So I want to talk about your dad a little bit. I know how close Yachty was with him, and I know all of you guys were, and how big of an influence he is, not only to you guys, but to a lot of people in Puerto Rico, his involvement in youth baseball down there, growing the sport down there. Um, just, you know, reflecting back, um, you know, on his importance in your life and and uh, and kind of th- that role model that he, that he was for you. Wow, where to start? I tell you, my first memory of of him, first that I can remember, was when he hit a walk-off home run in Utuado uh, in Puerto Rico in one of the finals game, and he uh, one of the semifinals games. And wow, I they keep people kept yelling his uh, my name because I th- mm-hmm. I was like five years old, six years old, and. Uh, and they kept saying, Benji, but it was my dad, because he, he won the game. And and I thought it was they were calling me. I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. So I run to the plate where he was running the bases. I run. Luckily, my uncle was playing with, with my dad at the time, and my mom's uh, brother, and he grabbed me out of the pile, hold me, and then when my dad celebrated, obviously, you know, he came to me, but... That was one of my first memory. I think my dad paid his dues big time, Kyle. I think he sacrificed. He sacrificed vacations. He sacrificed money. He sacrificed time, just for us. Imagine, so we were three. So I practiced Tuesday, Thursday. Yadi practiced Wednesday, Friday. Jose, it's almost the same dates. Mm-hmm. And then we both play Saturday and Sunday. So it was a freaking all week kind of thing in my house and my dad Kyle I never heard him complain once which is amazing these days that dads can be like oh man we'll do it tomorrow or we'll, we'll, we'll play catch tomorrow my dad I never saw him never saw him complain he got from work all day he got his food rested a little bit okay let's go to the field because we're lucky enough to grow up with the field being right in front of our house so so that was the, the lucky part there but the sacrifice that this, my dad and my mom did, man, it was so real, so real. And they, my mom dealing with four men at the house, it's it's unreal. Um, my dad sacrificed so much for us. He got us going in the right direction. He always said, God, family, and then respect. After that, it, it, it's, you know, whatever you want to put, but you have to live through those and you'll be fine. And, and we did it. We did it because he always, we always were reminded and and Jose his time and Yadi uh, when when me and Jose signed it was in '93, Yadi signed in 2000, so Yadi and my dad and my mom yeah. were by themselves for that time seven years eight years before he signed, and I mean all the sacrifice that this my you know my parents uh, have done is amazing he made it to the Hall of Fame from his playing time. Mm-hmm. an amateur of course in Puerto Rico and then later on for the little league too like come on he, I mean when he died Kyle it was more than a thousand kids with uniform mm. at the funeral more than a thousand kids and the other ones were just street clothes but he made a difference he, his big thing was keeping these kids away from the streets you know it's so easy at that time to go away from you know from respecting and going to drugs or something, and was, that's all he wanted. Keep you in the in baseball. You get you tired, and then you go home and you rest for the next day. You go to school and things like that. So, wow, man, I I don't think with my without my dad and my mom, obviously. I know, I know, I know. A lot of people say it, <laughs> but man, Kyle, I don't even know where where you know to keep one because without them, we don't we don't even make it. And, and plus, I brought it. Look at this is a picture that you're saying mm-hmm. in Tampa. Yep. yep. This is me when I was that age. Uh, that's when at uh, that same time where he hit the yep. the home runs. Yep. And and it's it's just an amazing story. I think uh, I think it's a tribute to my dad. It's not numbers. It got nothing to do with any numbers mm-hmm. or my career as mm-hmm. a gold glover. None of that. It's more uh, a tribute to a parent, which you know because you're going through it mm-hmm. with Bridget. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a tribute to him and my mom to how much they sacrificed for for his kiddos, and it's um, 
and I want I want that story out there. Yeah, and it is. I mean, it's yeah. been out there for a while. I yeah. still see books out there uh, being brought up to me mm-hmm. and all that stuff. But I wanted to show you a picture. Look at Yadi. <laughs> he was born white and blonde. <laughs> <laughs> is he getting left-handed there? What's he doing? <laughs> People don't know Yadi was a better left-handed hitter than righty. So, yeah. So you know, growing up, of course. But I want to show you a picture. I think it's around here somewhere. That um, that my dad is celebrating, uh, like a homer. I told you. Mm-hmm. I think it's at the beginning. But but yeah, Kyle, my dad. It's um, here. Here he is, and he he's okay. hitting. He is a very tiny man. Yeah. Second base outfield. But I wanted to show you that picture. But if I find it, I'll, I'll, okay. I'll show you. But man, my dad and my mom was a big, big part of our success, and I will never get tired of saying it, man. Yeah. Well, and your mom, I, I always love seeing her. She was always here. I mean, I, all the time coming to watch and support Yachty, and, and I know she was there for you. And She was here in the opening, opening day. Yeah. She spent time with us. She said, I said, Mom, Yachty's not playing. I, I hope you know. <laughs> what? I don't care. You know, I wanted to watch a game. And yeah. So. Yeah, it was always great to see her and, and coming to know that you guys were all so close. The hey, chan- my mom is actually more interesting than my dad. Yeah. I don't know if you guys know this, but... My mom is strong. My mom, she said <laughs> that word to Girardi in the elevator okay. because he, he didn't put Jose to play more <laughs> in Yankees. Um, he talked to Socha. Socha speaks Spanish. Uh-huh. And she told him, you you better put my brother in more. He's done a great job. You know, mm-hmm. like he went face to face with Socha. Okay. She did. And then she did boaching. Why did you... Uh, uh, bunt this guy over. <laughs> you gotta got two. Ro- oh, and Martini, Martini speaks Spanish, uh-huh. and oh, he, yeah. he she went with him. Mm-hmm. Why didn't you take out Garcia? Mm-hmm. Why he was tired already? Mm-hmm. How can you not see that? And I'm like, mom, <laughs> you know, like what the heck? <laughs> so my mom is our best bench coach yeah. for sure. Yeah, it was always awesome to see her. The, so you and Yadi um, never got to play with each other. You helped coach that year uh, with the Cardinals here. I think it was 2013, but. I was there when we got to play you with the Giants, and I always uh, refer back to the story. Uh, I my curveball was one of my best pitches, <laughs> and there was very few hitters that could hit my curveball, uh, hit it well. I mean, that, you know, it was my out pitch. I'd use it there, and so we're in um, we're in San Francisco, and I throw a curveball to you, and you hit it a mile foul (laughs) you hit it a mile foul and i thought what in the world man i was like forget this guy you know i don't care if it's yachty's brother or not you know so fastball in i was like i'm gonna buzz him a little bit let him know he ain't gonna do that to my curveball but fastball in you you turn around and kind of stare at me and then i'm like yeah yeah take that you know (laughs) and i throw the next pitch as a curveball and you hit a missile right back up the mound i had to duck to get out of the way of it and i'm convinced still to this day and I said something to Yachty, and he didn't like it, so I don't ever bring it back up. But I'm still convinced this day Yachty had to tell you what was coming. <laughs> he had to have been helping you and tell you, please tell me that that was, what, that no, was the only reason no. you were able to hit that. You know, Yachty was very <laughs> careful with those things, man. I, I laughed because at one point, uh, I don't know if you remember Joel Pinheiro. Uh-huh. Uh, by the way, I'm a really slow bat guy. If you would have thrown a sinker <laughs> in, you probably broke broken bat in a ground ball third. But luckily, you threw the curveball. Yeah. A very slow bat. Um I got better through the years, uh, something that Barry Bonds helped me out with the Giants and stuff. But it was it was amazing that day that we played that series, probably the same series. I don't know if Joel was there with yeah, you. But, yeah, I played with him. And he hit me in the knee. But he was right after like three or four no's. Mm. And I always pay attention. <laughs> I'm a catcher. <laughs> right. Right? So I'm like, I'm, I'm ready to go. And then no, no, a no. And then the first one, he says yes. And bam, he hit me right in the knee. <laughs> and I look down, I'm like, ah, oh, you know, in pain. And Yaddy goes, what do you think you're doing to the pitcher? Yeah, I'm yeah. like, what, yeah. dude? I thought he was yelling at me. And yeah. I look at him, and he's yelling at him. Yeah. like, I told you no three times. <laughs> oh, man, that was one of the funniest things. Uh, you have to be very careful with that, like Contreras playing with yeah. his brother. Yeah. But how cool is that? I mean, to walk up there and to see your brother back oh, behind no, the plate. No. I mean, amazing. in the big league game. Unreal. And, I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. Unreal. It gets really tough, Kyle. I think, I think it gets really tough because you think you know him, mm-hmm. but you don't. 
I, I always remember go back to when Barry Cito was pitching, uh, and Yadi had a three zero count, which I had no idea he had a three zero count. Uh, Barry Cito at that time was you know in the down. Yeah, towards the end. Yeah, and he didn't throw hard. He didn't have no fastball for strike, nothing for strike fastball. So I thought it was two zero, and I I asked for the changeup. And it was no reason other than that was a strike pitch. He he usually throws strike, and he threw a ball. But I never in my mind thought it was three zero. You know, I kept just rolling like, okay, I need a strike. Mm-hmm. And I call a changeup. He threw a ball, and then Okendo yelling out of there from third base, three zero changeup to your brother. What the hell? And I'm like. Yeah. You know, yeah. like I lost, I really did. I yeah. lost strike because I was, I wanted a strike. Right. And this guy was, uh, was always balls with fast. I mean, there's so many stories, but you have to be careful. You don't, you don't want to do that. You yeah. Know? You don't want to do that. And and plus, when we talk, uh, Yadi went to my house to eat, mm-hmm. and I told him, I said, hey, once we're there, I'm gonna call the game. You call your game. Mm-hmm. I mean, Wayne will pitch. Carpenter, I think, was there, and he pitched. And guys like that, I say, no, no, ju- just keep calling your game, and I'll call mine because I don't want anything to be said. Yeah. And, and, uh, but it was difficult because it's your brother. Mm-hmm. Here you are. You want him to get a hit. Yeah, you're right. But you need to get him out. <laughs> right, right, yeah. <laughs> yeah like, oh, you need him to get a hit and then throw him out trying to steal. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you guys should have had an agreement on yeah. that. <laughs> uh. Hey, another story funny with Jose, though. They let me go from Angels to Toronto. Mm-hmm. They let me go. So we, first time I go to uh Anaheim uh, to play the Angels. And second and third, a lefty behind me, Oberbe. I don't know if you remember mm-hmm. that name. Mm-hmm. Lyle Oberbe. Mm-hmm. And Sosha walked me intentionally with the right handed pitcher. I don't know why. So he intentionally, oh, okay. I went by and, and my brother's yelling. He's like, oh, you lucky man. We're going to get you out. You know? <laughs> and then the next time he gets on, and I never had an idea he was going to steal, dude. And he, he <laughs> got me off guard. Really? Yeah. Nobody covered. Yeah. Nobody covered because everybody's like, nah, he ain't going nowhere. Right, right. And the ball went by the back, and he would have been out, but, but nobody was there. So when he got to second, he looked at me, he goes, <laughs> you know, kind of like that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you're, okay, all right. So like two innings later or some, uh, Escobar, Kelvin Escobar was pitching. He was very slow to home plate. And I told my coach, I said, I'm going. <laughs> and he goes, no, 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 you stay here first base. I'm like, I'm going. I don't give a crap. I'm going. If he throw me out, he throw me out. <laughs> but what the hell, this is, you know, right. I, I ain't going. Uh, I'm not going to stay. He goes, oh, man, you're on your own. So I went, and they got crossed up at second, and he threw a hopper, and I made it to second, and I went like this. <laughs> <laughs> that's, oh, that's my awesome. only stolen base in the big league. That's it? And his only, no. I had like two or three. Oh, that, that's, that's amazing. Against your brother. That would, <laughs> if that was your only one, that would be amazing that would to have be against, crazy. Your, against your brother. <laughs> <clears throat> well, I think it's uh, I think it's so cool um, to be able to have, and I don't know Hosey very much. He, he came around, you know, when we won an 11. I'm not sure if you were here. Were I was, here for I was that? here, yeah. Because I know Hosey was. Yeah, I was so, I mean, I mean, you guys all travel around supporting each other. Yeah. Um, I was supposed to sign with the Cardinals, back up Yachty, that year. Yeah, I talked to the top, and they came up with a big number for backup. Uh, but then, Kyle, the next day, the next day, the next day, like, like that four days in a row, they keep – going down you know we don't have that we don't have this we don't have that and and yeah and yeah he got upset and they said no, no, no it's okay it's, yeah. it's all right and they freaking won the worst yeah years. what the hell yeah i would have been there with this guy <laughs> oh no man that's why he got me on the truck yeah. <laughs> there you he go. goes come in because you were supposed to be here <laughs> well and gerald laird ended up being our backup yeah. catcher that year yeah. and did a great job we had jason larue for yeah the four years three or four years before that mm-hmm. um they were good players gerald did a, he did a great job he was great in the clubhouse yeah. and um was a big part of that team but but i I think it's so cool that the three of you guys support each other so much so close still you know getting here to to be able to call games that that yadi got to do and and watch and be a part of that you know is 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 special especially with his career you know hall of fame career to be able to be there for that uh but i love what you're doing now um and i love that you're a part of you know never played here but coached here for a year um, but you're a part of the Cardinals. I mean, you're out doing everything that, that I mean, we do camps together. We're at fantasy camp together. Yeah. We're, we're, we've been on vacation on the Cardinal vacations together. And, uh, uh, you're, hey, you're a Cardinals, great ambassador for, for the, the Cardinals club. took care of my brother. 
when the Cardinals taking care of my brother, they took care of my family. Yeah. So it's really, for me, it's not. For me, it comes out of my heart to have an opportunity first to do the games for Yadi, but also be a part of the community. Yeah. Because I have that chance. I have the platform, and, and I'm being thankful and grateful to the Cardinals for doing this. Not only my job, <laughs> yeah. but you know, taking care of Yadi for so many years and, and paying him this amount of money or whatever but to take care of his family. He took care of us, Yeah, literally. So for me to do this, Kyle, it just comes out of my heart, and I love doing it, man. I love being with the kiddos. I love seeing them smile, and I love that. I don't need anything. Yeah, know. well, and you were you were going back and forth to Arizona, back yes. home, and now you're here. I mean, yep. you, you, you've you gotten a house here, and, and you're here uh, full-time during the season. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's a big commitment. I think that says a lot about um, – you know, you're standing here with the organization and, and, and what you're, hey, you're doing and being a part of it. more opportunities to help. More yeah. opportunities for me, for the Cardinals to call up and say, hey, Bimo, where are you at? Hey, I'm here. Yep. I'm doing this. I'm not doing anything. What do you got? Oh, I have an event, you know, here at the stadium. They, you know, it's off season or anything. You know, I'm here. And, and I told I told them, I said, hey, I'm, I'm up for it. I'll do it. You name it. You have an event or something. We're here. So we don't have to go anywhere and I think it's awesome. It's worked out pretty good. So before I let you go here, what, give an update on Yachty. What's he for the fans that are interested in what he's doing? And I know he's you know he's coaching. Looks like his son's team. I follow him on Instagram yeah. and um, and been managing and you know in at Venezuela. Yeah. Um, well, right this he year done. he'll be managing in Puerto Rico. Okay. He's about to eh, maybe in November the season start, but he'll be with my brother Jose, who's who's right now Jose is managing the uh, Laguna team in Mexico. They're up in their series, three to two, uh, against what, what they're called Monterey uh, Yankees. Yep, you know, like yep. The top dog. So they're doing good. Yadi is busy, man. Yadi is like you said. Uh, Yanu, they just won in Dominican. They won the World Series champion, sixteen U. Wow. The World Series champion. Yadi was the manager and coaches. They're all great. Uh, Ariana, she plays volleyball, and they were just in Colombia playing tournaments before that. They are doing that baseball. Uh, Danny, the little one, mm-hmm. it's uh, it's there at home. I mean, he doesn't play baseball sports yet, but he's a handful, man. He's fun. <laughs> he's fun to chase around. Um, but Yadi's busy, man. Yadi's busy. He knows what's coming, Kyle. He has yeah. to know yeah. that once these couple years go by, <laughs> somebody's going to come up and say, hey, Yadi, I want you to to uh, drive my ship, you know, and I, I want you to do it, you know, and, and he knows that. Yeah. So he's taking care of all these basketball yep. teams that lost in the finals. The baseball st- team that he owns is still alive for the championship of Puerto Rico. So he's back and forward and everything, dude. He's, he's just doing this. He's building a big, big farm. He wants, he wants animals. <laughs> so he's pretty much. Yachty the farmer. The, I can see it. I can uh, totally see it. I wish, I'm going to show you a picture of him with the hat <laughs> yeah, and I can with totally the, with see the it. uniform. Totally see it. Yeah. So you think he'll manage one day in the big leagues? I think so. Yeah. I, I don't think Yadi's going to escape the uh, urge. And yeah. well, we saw it. He, he got yeah, eliminated last year. Yep. Three days later, he's in Venezuela. Mm-hmm. When he got just eliminated. Yeah. So And then uh, he's managing Puerto Rico. So I think, or oh, oh, in the baseball team, the classic. Yeah. He yeah, managed that right. team. He did a great job, outstanding. Yeah. I think he did an awesome job. Uh, he, so it, it was interesting. He was. Mo- I thought he'd be more chill as a manager. He paced a lot in the dugout. He was walking up and down. Yeah. I, I figured he'd be kind of a you know sit on the bench, kind of lean on the lean on the rail kind of guy. But man, well, he the, was he was he was moving. Four games in Venezuela, he got tossed. Yeah, I, I know. I know that. We got to work on that. We got to work on. He that. had a streak going until he messed it up the fifth game. But <laughs> but uh, I think. I think having Jose around, yeah, because Jose was there, and having uh, his friends, his people that know baseball, but right. they they know each other forever. I think it helps. I think this year in Winter Bowl we'll see m- more of the baseball classic. Yeah, um, he's still he's still Yadi. I mean, when they ask a, p- a question, you know, and like for example, one time they ask him, "Hey, why did you keep changing pitchers? Is that a tactic against Dominica?" And he goes, first of all, because." You want to, <laughs> right? Because I want to, right? Second, yeah, it was a strategy, yeah. and it worked, right? Right, right, right. <laughs> so right. you know, you're gonna get, you're gonna get Yadi and 
you know, like that. But I think he's going to come down, like you said. I think he's, he's going to come down. He, his mind, it's just Kyle. The mind of Yari is, is going way too fast. So he needs to sit down, Yeah, I think. I think he needs to be pacing back yeah. and forth to, so his brain keeps going, you know? He's one of the best baseball minds I've been around. We were talking about before we started this. Uh, Jose Okendo, Yadi, Albert. And, and I think Jose had a big part in Yadi and Albert having – the mm -hmm. knowledge that, that they do because they were all so close but i mean he sees the game differently um than anybody else and you know i think he'd be a huge asset as a manager and um whoever gets him uh whoever gets him and uh it's gonna have a a, a brain of a life yeah. and the people that they're gonna bring in are gonna be really good baseball people yeah yeah you know? and good with with the kids these days yeah you know, because they're gonna they're gonna push them. Right. Yeah. Right now, it's, it's no push. Yeah. You see it a lot. You know, it's a lot out there, like a instructional league, <laughs> like we see <laughs> right, these games right. with Oakland. Yeah. No disrespect right. to any player. Yeah. That's big leagues, mm -hmm. but that's what it seems like. Mm -hmm. uh, well, he will he will not allow that. So we'll see. Hopefully, we'll see him soon. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Well, Benji, thank you so much for your time. It's always great to see you and, and uh, sharing your story. And thanks for what you're doing for, for the Spanish broadcast and and, uh, and help grow in the, the, the Cardinal fan base uh, here in St. Louis and well beyond. Uh, so that's it for Benji Molina. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you want to catch up on any of our other podcasts that we have, have done this year or last year, you can check out the Chatters Box podcast on any platform that you get your podcasts on. And uh, we will see you next month.